on everybody, today we are going for a KOM attempt at a new group the golf segment. What's going on everybody, welcome to a new video. Today I would like to show you exactly how I fuel before a KOM effort. So when I go out KOM hunting, exactly what I eat during a day because I found incredible benefit from it. I've tested this multiple times. I've tested it with Super Sapiens and every time I fuel myself this way, it always leads to great performances on either the segment for a PR or for a KOM. In case it is a five kilometer segment here in the southern part of Bali and I managed to snag the KOM and I'd like to show you exactly how I fueled it. First off, if I have to do a really, really hard effort, I prefer to do it in the afternoon. There's a lot of research going around. I've studied this quite a lot and it appears to be that uh, for peak physical condition, the afternoon is preferable. A lot of people like Ben Greenfield say this and I find this to be true. So whenever I have to do an effort like this, I opt for either just after lunch or like later in the afternoon. In this video, it was at 5 p.m. So after a whole day. And the key to perform uh, at the best of my abilities in these efforts uh, is to throughout the day, basically try and keep a steady flow of high nutritional value foods in order to supply my body with ample energy, but without taxing the digestive system. So everything we need to digest takes blood flow away from all the other things that the body needs to do. So when we need to digest something that is kind of hard to digest or even just a little bit harder to digest, blood flow gets diverted from our tissues to the digestive system. So that is something that I always try and avoid. And this means super simple foods, basically. Through a lot of trial and error, like I said, I kind of have established a sort of a routine, a daily fueling strategy for KOMs. And I'd like to show you what it is. For breakfast, I went out with Brina and had two smoothie bowls with the base of banana and acai and some really, really simple fruit and granola on top. The granola was kind of like oats with a bit of sweetener. I had one iced coffee and that was it for breakfast. The other key fueling for a KOM in my experience is to allow ample amounts of time for digestion to happen. So between one meal and the next, I left four hours in order for the body to just digest all that stuff and then move on to the next meal. After breakfast, we chilled out at the beach, uh, spent some time with friends, uh, explored a bit around. And then at around 12, it was time for lunch. Lunch looked like a two-part meal, divided one hour between the first part and the second part. The first part consisted of fruit that I stopped at a roadside stall to buy, and it was just basically one banana and one dragon fruit. Why these two fruits? Well, banana is a starchy fruit, high in energy, but it is slightly harder to digest. It's very good for the energy content, whereas the dragon fruit is a high water content fruit, and that is just super easy to process and digest. So our body just eats it and it gets absorbed basically immediately. It takes like, for fruit, it takes like, uh, from a quarter of an hour to one hour to be digested. I added some organic sugar to this fruit in order to have a little energy boost. I find that very, very beneficial. Just cut up this fruit, put some sugar on it, ate it, and then chilled out for one hour. left 60 minutes before I consumed the second part of the meal, the second part of lunch, which was super basic white rice, high carb, no fiber, very, very easy to digest, very fast to digest for the body. And I ate 100 to 150 grams of white rice with some sugar on top, Thailand style, like mango sticky rice in Thailand, so sweet rice. And this is oh, absolutely, uh, energy powerhouse. In Europe, I used to do cornflakes with rice, milk, and sugar. And that just gave me this 
incredible boost of energy. What I'm trying to do with this last meal is to give my body the max amount of energy I can, basically. Keep the body like really pumping and just charged up and feeling like, feeling strong, you know what I mean? This testing with Super Sapiens, I knew exactly how much time to leave between the meal and the effort. And that is exactly how much I waited. I waited like three hours, which I had through previous experiments understood it was exactly the time that my body needed to process this stuff. So after the meal, I just basically chilled out and kind of like prepared for the effort, which was gonna be for me like fairly hard. This segment is a uh, super wide, really perfect road inside the Kuta Golf um, area in Bukit, in Bali. And it's a fairly trafficked segment, uh, a lot of people cycling there, running there. And it is basically divided into two parts. The first part is fairly flat, or let's call it rolling. And the second part is with some pretty punishing climbs. Not really super steep, it has I think 160 meters of elevation over a total of 5.2 kilometers. But the thing is, these climbs are uh, fairly hard to sustain a power output on because they are kind of long. You have some sections where you can kind of like chill out a little bit, but sustaining uh, an effort here is not easy. My strategy was basically to hammer it as hard as I could, as, as hard as my legs and my lungs would, would let me. And I was aiming at a 12 minute time on the segment, which I knew would have put me in a good spot to gain the KOM. So after waiting uh, for a couple of hours, I started moving towards the KOM area with Brina, who followed me on the scooter to film the effort and we approached closer to it and then it was time to go. I did the first section, rolling section, kind of, let's call it conservatively, but it was a uh, high effort anyway. Bear in mind that the values you see here on the power meter are fairly lower than what they actually were. Climbing section started. So the climbing section, these are pretty evenly steady grades. I did the first one, I did the second one, but man, it was really taking a toll on me. But I just kept on looking at the watch and something crazy happened, basically, I forgot, I had the, I had Strava Live segments on the watch, but I kind of like forgot if the plus meant that I was ahead or behind. So basically I was going blind. I didn't know, I was just going as fast as I could because I couldn't rely on the watch. I Basically I thought I was behind. That really helped to push, especially on the last climb. Got up to the top, I was 
absolutely toast. This was probably one of the hardest efforts I'd, I've done this year. Compar comparable maybe to the other PR effort I made a video about in Italy. Oh man, I couldn't breathe. I just, I, I, I was absolutely toast. <laughs> So this strategy worked again uh, and I think I'm gonna stick with it. Probably I'm gonna evolve it and make it even better. I still have one super sapiens uh, sensor to test, but basically, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing going forward. It's gonna be food with sugar for breakfast with maybe some cereal. If I was in Europe instead of the dragon fruit, I would eat, I don't know, maybe like some watermelon or something like that. And for lunch or the last meal before the effort, it would be like a very simple carb, like rice, white pasta, uh, or something like that. With, uh, in my case, I prefer sweet. I really like sweet. I feel like it gives me more energy, but it can be whatever you want. Just really, really simple. No oil, no stuff that can impair our digestion or our blood flow. Hope you liked the video. I'll let me know in the comments if you fuel your volcano efforts differently. I'm really interested to know what other people are doing around the world. If you like this video, please give it a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. It would help tremendously with the growth and catch you in the next video.